Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here we go with our unit description of what we're going to be doing for our geometric abstraction piece of art. I want you to look at a couple of pieces of art right now done by several different artists. Here we have snow art created by artist Simon Beck, where he created these very intricate looking designs using geometric shapes and his feet. And he created these very, very large scale geometric pieces just by walking and planning beforehand. And you can see here in this image, him walking through the snow to create his design. We have another artist, this is a street artist who created geometric type people. Now when we think of ge geometric, we tend to think shapes. We don't really think living people. We think flat, two-dimensional shapes, squares, rectangles, octagons, hexagons. And here we have an artist taking those geometric shapes and making them look like people, which I find really interesting. And now both Simon Beck and this street artist are alive today creating these pieces of art. Here we have um, artist Frank Stella from the 1960s. Frank Stella created pieces dealing strictly with squares, circles, semicircles, and color. And he focused a lot on those shapes to create these very interesting designs that make you really want to just kind of fall into the painting almost into a trance. In the early 1900s, there was a movement in Russia called constructivism where art was created for design and design purposes only, not for pretty pictures, but to be something. And a lot of these Russian artists created very geometric pieces of abstract art where they focused a lot on squares and circles, rectangles, and color. And even if they added people, they were basic shapes, basic colors. They weren't meant to look realistic. My favorite artist that created during this time period has to be Vazal Kandinsky. Kandinsky created the most beautiful pieces of art, in my opinion, that dealt with lines and shapes and colors. And this is how he saw music. This one is, I think, one of my favorites. The amount of color that he has in there. The lines, the shapes, the overlapping. It's chaotic, but it's calming at the same time. You might not feel the same way, and that's okay. But those are just some things that we're going to look at a little bit later on in the unit. But I wanted to give you an idea of really what I'm, I see us going into. Now, in this project, you will learn the following. The elements of art, specifically, we're going to talk about line and shape. The difference between realism and abstract art. The two types of abstract art. You're going to create a drawing that shows the difference between realism and abstract, so that I know, that you know, that we all understand what we're doing. You're going to create an abstract drawing using only geometric shapes and lines. And you're going to learn about and use three to four different techniques for colored pencils because, face it, everybody in here still uses colored pencils. Very elementary and not for the middle school level where we currently are. So I'm going to teach you a couple of different techniques that will help you expand how you use your colored pencils. So what I want you to do right now is I want you to take the information here on this screen, the pieces of art that we were looking at, and your pretest information, and on your student learning guide, I want you to go to step two, and you're going to create your three goals, and you're going to list three ways you plan on reaching these goals during this unit. If you have any questions, please see me.